Hey everyone, and welcome to our first in-depth look at Rhett Paladins in Shadowlands. If you've been keeping up with player opinion of Rhett Paladins in Shadowlands, you might be thinking they're looking to be one of the weaker specs. Well, in this video, we've consulted with Mystic, one of the highest rated Rhett Paladins in the world, in order to show you why Rhett Paladins are actually continuing to look competitive in the new expansion, while also covering all the basics to help you get started with your own Rhett's the moment Season 1 of Shadowlands begins, including the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and legendaries. We'll also be releasing a refresher guide when Season 1 starts that will cover any outdated information in this guide, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. So be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified the moment those guides are out. To get things started, let's take a look at how Rhett has changed in Shadowlands from BFA. In terms of offense, Rhett's are once again kings of burst. A few changes to their talent tree, a redesign of execution sentence, and the introduction of Seraphim and Final Reckoning have given Rhett's the ability to literally one-shot players. As for defense, Word of Glory is once again baseline, and the new talent Healing Hands has given Rhett's healing similar in strength to back in Kata, where they were capable of playing triple DPS and acting as a pseudo-healer. So, given the huge burst and off healing Rhett brings to the table now, their playstyle has shifted back to being a lot more one dimensional, with Rhett's putting out huge amounts of burst once a minute while focusing on more of a support role in between their burst with off heals. Now, while their playstyle is quite limited, Rhett's are still able to fill the niche support role, providing their team with longevity while frequently setting up kill attempts every time their burst sequence is ready. Still, though, Rhett is definitely a notch below the strongest melee, as it doesn't really compare to rogues, windwalkers, warriors, and DK. So, while Rhett isn't in the best spot right now, it undoubtedly holds its own and has a place in the meta, providing it's placed in the right comp. This all leads us to believe that Rhett's could use a buff, mostly to their sustained damage. While their defensive toolkit and mobility isn't the best, a few new Shadowlands additions help to counteract that. So, although a few buffs in that department could help, Rhett's are likely to benefit the most from a buff to their sustained damage and a nerf to their burst. Alright, next up we're going to take a look at everything you need to get started with your own Rhett's, starting from the best races. If you're playing Alliance, Human is your best option. The changes to PvP trinkets no longer being an honor talent and instead being an item that you have to equip means that humans are the only race that can equip two offensive trinkets while still being able to break out of stuns. That option coupled with the human spirit, which gives them additional secondary stats, makes human the best alliance race. Alternatively, Dark Iron Dwarf remains a strong pick to deal with the powerful priest spell Mind Games. As for Horde, we recommend playing Blood Elf, as Arcane Torrent has great potential against some classes, especially enemy Holy Paladins. Moving on, let's go through your best talents. Starting with the level 15 row, Execution Sentence is easily the best choice here. It's an integral part of your burst and is what enables Rhett to completely one-shot players on their own. Next up, the level 25 row is rather lackluster, not really offering any strong choices. We suggest picking up Blade of Wrath for the additional Holy Power generation. The third row comes with three viable talents, with Fist of Justice being taken to most matchups as a way to more frequently stun your kill target or healers as part of a CC chain. Repentance has its place when playing a comp that is very limited on CC, and Blinding Light works well when playing with a sub rogue to give them more ways to land saps mid-game. Up next, in the level 35 tier, both Cavalier and Unbreakable Spirit are interchangeable depending on the bracket and matchup. Double DPS 2s and fast-paced 3s games will generally favor the additional mobility from Cavalier, whereas Unbreakable Spirit will always be better in longer games and will likely always be taken when playing at higher ratings to bolster your defensive toolkit with more frequent access to both Shield of Vengeance and Divine Shield. The level 40 tier remains rather controversial, with different rats favoring each of the three talents. Our pick is Seraphim, as it plays more into the one minute burst window that rats seem to be evolving around, as you're able to boost all of your stats each time you ramp up into a kill attempt execution sentence. Holy Avenger, though, remains a viable option, especially in double DPS 2s, to be able to keep you and your teammate alive by spamming out Word of Glories. And Divine Purpose is seemingly your best pick for RNG in your way to more consistent damage. However, you can get very unlucky with procs, and so we don't really recommend picking this up. In the next row, Healing Hands is looking to be the best choice as it turns Word of Glory into a very reliable source of healing. Without this talent, the healing from Word of Glory simply isn't high enough to justify constantly spending holy power on it. Although Selfless Healer worked well in BFA and hasn't actually changed, it's the addition of Healing Hands that makes it no longer the optimal choice. The final talent row in the level 50 row goes to another new addition, Final Reckoning. Prior to this talent being implemented, Rhett's Consistent and Burst Damage both felt quite lackluster 
on the beta, but the inclusion of Final Reckoning, which has replaced Inquisition, has been a huge contributing factor into why Rets are capable of globaling enemy players. Not only does it hit hard, but the additional 50% damage done you get on your Holy Power Spenders are what make the one minute cooldown Ret burst so deadly. It's possible we may see Ret switch over to Crusade later in the expansion when their base stats are higher, but right now we definitely recommend sticking with Final Reckoning. Next, let's go over your PvP talents. Currently, the trio of Lawbringer, Blessing of Sanctuary, and Unbound Freedom make up a really solid build that works in almost every matchup. Lawbringer simply gives you a ton of extra damage over the course of a longer game and also contributes to a decent chunk of extra burst during your kill attempts. Blessing of Sanctuary plays perfectly into a Ret's support role, enabling them to keep their teammates out of CC and is especially useful right now considering how strong rogues and priests are. And with the loss of the major essence conflict and strife, Unbound Freedom must now be taken as one of your three PvP talents in order to keep your mobility somewhat competitive. Without this talent, you'll have an extremely hard time dealing with the abundance of slows and roots paired with offensive dispels that will quickly remove your blessing of freedom if you play without this talent. As for alternative PvP talents, the most important thing to mention is the newly redesigned and nerfed Aura of Reckoning. The BFA version of the spell, Hammer of Reckoning, gave you access to a one minute CD avenging wrath for a few seconds. Unfortunately, the redesign of this spell has seen it fall from grace as a consistent part of your toolkit, as it takes too long to stack and triggers on an auto attack, meaning that it can easily proc at terrible times and be completely useless. While it may still see some play, we're currently not recommending picking it up, although this may change once players have had more time to get used to the talent. The only other talents worth mentioning are Jurisdiction and Law and Order. The former can have its place in some matchups where you absolutely need to stun healers for CC without the need to reach them, although this scenario is incredibly niche and won't happen often. Law and Order, on the other hand, will likely see a lot more play in twos when paired with a healer, but probably won't be featured much in threes unless you're playing with a class that doesn't have a slow and you're losing games because the enemy team is too free to retreat and avoid your damage. All right. So you've hit max level and you've got the right set of talents. What's next? Well, if you've been around since Legion, you'll be very familiar with the term Borrowed Power, which is set to continue into Shadowlands. You'll need to start by choosing the best covenant for your class, which will give you access to two abilities among a whole host of other perks that we'll cover after this section. Currently, we're recommending the Night Fae as the best covenant for Rep Paladins. While this may be seen as a strange pick by some, the covenant's signature and class ability, along with some of the Soulbind abilities that you get, really complement a Rep toolkit. Blessing of Seasons, which cycles through four different blessings, can be used to increase your burst on the opener, and then lower the cooldown of your Avenging Wrath. On top of that, Soul Shape is a great addition to the lack of mobility that Rets have, and it's an instant cast. After choosing the Night Fae as your Covenant, you'll then get to have one of three Soulbinds active, each of which comes with a selection of Soulbind abilities. We recommend going with Corrain for the Soulbind ability Wild Hunt Tactics as it both increases your damage to high health targets and healing to low health targets, something that plays really well into talents like Execution Sentence and Healing Hands, as you'll be hitting someone that's been topped during your burst sequence even harder and healing someone that's dropped low even more. Each Soulbind also gives you access to a combination of four conduits, categorized as Endurance, Potency, and Finesse. Our recommended path through Corain sees you pick up two Potency Conduits, one Endurance, and one Finesse. For the Potency Conduits, Templar's Vindication and Virtuous Command are looking to be your best options and both work in a similar way offering the chance to deal additional damage. Two Endurance Conduits stand out as being viable, with Divine Call looking to be optimal in longer games when paired with Unbreakable Spirit, and Shielding Words looking good for matchups where you'll be healing a lot and don't necessarily care about getting your Divine Shields back faster. All four Finesse Conduits also have a place, with Echoing Blessing looking to be your most consistent option. Light Sparting can be considered as a more offensive option for those games where you'll be pressing W until you win. Dalwart as a Crusader may be considered into Warlock, locks and priests. However, the need to swap out of the damage reduction that you gain from Devotion Aura to get the Fear Reduction may turn some rets away from wanting to use this conduit. And finally, Wrench Evil is a somewhat viable pick. However, without knowing what you're going to queue into, it's unlikely that you want to pick this up as it would only really get good value from it against Warlocks to fear their pet in order to prevent interrupts on your teammates. And that leaves us with our suggested optimal build looking something like this. With Templar's Vindication, Virtuous Command always being taken. You'll then get to pick between Divine Call and Golden Path for your Endurance Conduit and Echoing Blessings and Light Sparting for your Finesse. Alright, that brings us to the final section on which Legendary you should craft for PvP. Final Verdict is shaping up to be your best option, as it both helps to deal with your mobility issue by giving you yet another
another damaging ability that you can use outside of melee range while also giving you more frequent access to Hammer of Wrath along with a little extra damage. And while a few other legendaries do look decent, we wouldn't recommend playing without Final Verdict in PvP. Alright everyone, that concludes our first look at Rep Paladins in Shadowlands. You should now have everything that you need to get started in Season 1, and be sure to subscribe and check back for our follow-up video which will include updates to information in this guide along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and what your best comps are. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.